Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great time. My name is Eric and I'm glad you could join us because today we're gonna to be making fouet. And the word fouet literally translates to the word whip. And the reason this salami is called whip is because once this salami is dried, this thin, long salami with the cord still attached looks strikingly similar to the handle of a whip. And so I'm gonna take you through the entire process of how to make this incredible charcuterie fouet. Okay, let's make salami. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is prepare our meat. And if you've watched any of my videos, then you'll know there's a particular methodology that I follow when it comes to making sausages and salami. And I always prepare my meat first and then put it in the freezer so that it can chill. For this recipe, we're gonna be using lean pork and pork back fat at a ratio of 80-20. And you can find a link to the recipe in the description box below. It's got adjustable quantities. You know, I outline all the steps. I tried to make it as easy as possible. So we're just cutting this into pieces that are small enough to fit into our grinder. As soon as I'm done, I'm gonna place this into the freezer. We want everything super cold, you know, 32 degrees, 30 degrees before we grind it. So this is what all that looks like. We're gonna go ahead and put that in the freezer and then get our starter culture ready. The starter culture we're using is called Flavor of Italy, and it's a collection of bacteria that will help ferment our salami. This will produce a safe and delicious product once it's done. So we're just gonna rehydrate that for 30 minutes, set it to the side as we get our spices ready. And our spices are really simple for this wet. We are using regular salt, We've got Instacure number one, because this project is only gonna take three to four weeks. We've got dextrose, which is food for the bacteria, a little white pepper, and then we're gonna add some garlic. And then during the mixing process, we'll add a little bit of wine, but that's it. It's a very simply seasoned salami. Our meat has just come out of the freezer. It's partially frozen, which is perfect. And so we're just gonna grind the meat and fat together on a six millimeter plate. Okay, now it's time to mix. And just a quick word, if you take the temperature of your meat after you put it through the grinder and it's in the high 30s or low 40s, you might wanna rechill it because you want your meat really cold when you mix it. So let's go ahead and add all of our spice mix as well as our starter culture. And we're just gonna drizzle that little starter culture in. And then we're gonna finish it up with a little white wine and that's it. We're just gonna go ahead and mix this until our mixture is nice and sticky. You know, if you grab a handful, it's gonna to stick to the bottom of your hand if you turn your hand upside down. And we are there, so let's go ahead and just get this into our sausage stuffer. And we're gonna be using a small diameter hog casing. Fouet is a short, narrow salami, so it's not gonna be very thick, which is why it dries so quickly. So anywhere between 32 to 36 millimeter is perfect. I like 34 millimeter, and it looks like our casing is on. We've got nice slack in uh, between the horn and the casing itself. And we're just gonna go ahead and get that stuff. So we're working nice and easy. We're using an electric sausage stuffer by the sausage maker. It makes this job incredibly easy. And notice I'm creating gaps in between the links. So my links are about 12 inches long. And what we're gonna do is just cut between the gaps, tie them off, and then make three separate salami that are going to hang in our chamber. Not that big a deal. The little bit of meat that's left inside of our hopper, we're gonna take that and wrap it into some cling film just like that. And when it comes time to test the pH, we're gonna use that sample to test the pH so that we don't disturb what's in our casings. And now that that's done, we're just gonna go ahead and separate our salami. So I'm just gonna cut that right down the middle. I'm gonna tie each one of those ends off using a bubble knot so it doesn't slip and our meat doesn't come pouring out the other end. And then we're gonna poke them with a sausage pricker, making sure that there's no air pockets. So the next thing to do is weigh each salami and record the weight. This is how we're gonna know when it's ready. So the first number that I'm writing down is the actual weight, it's 355 grams. And the next number we write down is our target weight. And so once we hit our target weight, our salami is done and we're gonna be targeting a 35% weight loss. So as soon as this particular salami stick hits 231 grams, which is 35% less than the actual weight, our salami is ready to eat. It's now time to ferment our salami. Now this is the stage in which the bacteria that we added consume the sugar 
and release lactic acid, which is going to lower the pH. That lower pH makes this a safe salami to eat. And I'm just going to wrap all of these salami in some cling film. I'm going to do that for a couple reasons. Number one, the cling film is going to lock in the moisture. It's going to keep the humidity very high inside that packet, which is one of the parameters for good fermentation. You want high humidity. The other reason I'm doing this is because I want them to ferment straight like a stick, which is going to give me that characteristic, you know, handle of a whip kind of thing. And so we're just going to ferment this on our kitchen counter because the other parameter for proper fermentation is temperature. And my kitchen happens to be fairly warm. 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you are going to be doing this project, place your salami that's covered in cling film in an area that's between 75 and 85 Fahrenheit, usually the warmest room in your house, or you could place it in your oven with the light on for roughly 18 to 24 hours. Our target pH for this salami is going to be between 4.9 and 5.2. I personally like to target 4.9-ish. And with this particular starter culture, the flavor of Italy, I'm telling you 18 to 20 hours is about how long it takes. And there's a couple indicators that let you know fermentation went well. Number one is going to be the color. That'll be the first thing you see. And the color is going to be greatly magnified. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be red. Uh, you're also going to notice a change in texture. It's going to look a little waxy, uh, more dense, a little rubbery. Uh, it's certainly not going to feel like ground meat. And we're now actually going to test the pH. So we're using a pH meter from a pair of instruments. And all we're gonna do is put that pH meter in the meat and it's gonna tell us what we need to know. 4.9 to 5.2, that's what we're looking for. And it looks like we're at 4.90. And that's exactly where I wanna be. And if you're thinking about getting into fermenting meat, salami making, check out this pH meter by a pair of instruments. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below. Invaluable tool for the craft. All right, so I'm gonna place this into my drying chamber and we need to put some kind of protective mold on it. Now, what I'm about to show you here is only possible if you have other salami in your chamber and if you're positive that it's good mold. This is a form of back slopping. I'm just gonna rub my hand on a salami that has good Penicillium naugeovense on it and I'm just gonna wipe down the Fouet salami. But just so you know, you can buy this mold online. It's called Mold 600. Mix it with water, spray it on your salami and you now have this beautiful white salami mold on your salami. All right, so in the drying chamber, the temperature is 55 Fahrenheit, 13 Celsius. The humidity is 80%, and we're gonna target a weight loss of 35%. So it's just gonna hang there and dry, and it normally takes anywhere between three to four weeks. And although we're using a drying chamber, if you happen to have a basement or a cellar or a room in your house, where you have 55 Fahrenheit with high humidity, you can just hang this in that room and it's gonna dry pretty nice. So this is what it looks like. Beautiful mold coverage. The sticks are firm, nice color. So far, everything looks good. I mean, we've got that classic fouet look. You know, we got the straight stick with the loop at the end of it, which represents the handle of a whip. And uh, it smells great, uniformly firm throughout. I am very excited about this. So let's slice it open and see what the center cut has to tell us. And this center cut's gonna reveal a lot. You know, if something went wrong through the process, this is where you'll see it. And it looks like our fouet is perfect. No dry ring, bound together well, the fat isn't smeared, great color. Let's go ahead and finish slicing it up and see what it tastes like. Okay, let's try this wet, and I gotta tell you, I think this looks absolutely incredible. Great color, great texture, everything looks exactly the way that it should. It's got some very nice marbling, and it smells wonderful. It smells very simple, very earthy, a little mushroomy. I did grab a piece with some mold on it, and one of the questions we get asked a lot is, is the mold edible? And uh, the mold is edible. It's from the same family of molds that you would find on camembert or brie. This is a, a different variety of penicillium. Uh, and because of the casing that we use, the casing is edible as well. 
although you can uh, completely remove it if you want to, so it's up to you. All right, let's give it a try. Fouet. There is just something very special about a simply seasoned salami. Beside the fact that it's fermented, which is already going to elevate its flavor, it's got that aging time in the chamber. And so the flavors are complex, sophisticated, and it's absolutely delicious. What I really like about Fouet is its small diameter. And what I like about a small diameter salami is that it is incredibly forgiving, which is great if you're just getting started in the world of fermented sausages, it dries pretty fast. Within three to four weeks, it's ready. It usually dries pretty even, and so your conditions don't have to be so super precise as if you were trying to dry a, you know, two or three inch salami. So I hope you get a chance to make this sweat. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you found this video entertaining or helpful in any way, a thumbs up would be appreciated. And if you're new to this channel, we'd like to say welcome. Thanks for joining us. We are in the middle of Celebrate Sausage Season 2. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. I've got a brand new video for you every day this month. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.